Uh, and I really do look forward to working you, with you, Mr. Chair, and a ranking member, um, Congresswoman Emerson. Uh, as we uh, tackle these very uh, challenging uh, financial issues, I um, served on the Financial Services Committee for eight years and saw this coming. And there were <laughs> few of us who raised these issues uh, for many, many years with regard to the deregulation of the financial services industry, uh, what was going on with regard to the SEC with the lack of resources for enforcement, and, and many of the, the difficulties now unfortunately that our country is faced with, and you, Madam Chair, but I'm very delighted that you're there. And uh, congratulations. And I look forward to working with you. I wanted to ask you um, again about um, TARP, just how the SEC and uh, TARP kind of uh, work together, <coughs> if at all. I mean, what's the relationship there? And, and I ask you this because I know uh, in TARP we, we don't see a lot of enforcement mechanisms. <laughs> Uh, and I'm wondering uh, what the SEC's role is with regard to any enforcement of TARP funds. And then specifically, uh, my staff has been many, with many of our community banks who have been uh, recipient of TARP funding. They're uh, considering now giving back that money uh, because of the onerous restrictions that uh, the smaller community banks are subjected to the really uh, reporting requirements and all of the um, uh, issues that the larger banks uh, have had to deal with. They're sort of painted with a, a bad brush. And so how, if you were weighing in on this, how do you see uh, that relationship and what do you think we could do to help the community banks ensure that they are not painted with the same brush as the bad actors were? I, I have um, tremendous sympathy and I have heard m concerns expressed articulately and broadly about um, be, you know, community banks that kind of stuck to their knitting, knew their customers, didn't create a lot of issues, are being sort of embroiled in the same controversy and issues um, as the larger uh, money center banks. I, I will say the SEC has um, two main interactions with TARP. One is that because we write the rules that require disclosure by public companies, um, and many of the, of the many banks are in fact public companies whose shares are traded, we have disclosure rules that are impacting their um, um, what, what they are reporting in their um, quarterly and annual filings um, that, are, that are then made public. And so just as a specific example, when um, the executive compensation limitations were put in the bill um, that require um, a say on pay, the ability of shareholders to provide an advisory vote on compensation for recipients of TARP funds, the SEC will in fact review that disclosure. Um, we will ultimately pass rules. We couldn't do it in the weekend. Um, between when the bill was passed and when it was effective. But we will ultimately write rules that will govern the disclosure about executive compensation and um, the ability of shareholders to have an advisory vote on, on uh, executive pay. The other main way we interact is really through working with um, what is called SIGTARP, the Special Inspector General for TARP funds. Um, I have met with him and his, um, some of his team. He's met with our enforcement team and we are working together and will work together very closely to ensure that to the extent there is any misuse of TARP funds or fraud in the uh, use of TARP funds that we are able to support them um, rapidly with e both expertise and the capability to go to court uh, and get redress. We have actually already done one case um, where um, a, somebody was lying about their receipt of TARP funds in order to attract other investment. And that case was brought several weeks ago. But we expect um, that we will have plenty of work to do in this area. Thank you. And let me just one more quick question. In terms of the victims of Bernard Madoff, what is going on and how are they going to be compensated and uh, the um, yeah, um, a, a very good question and one that is on many people's minds um, SIPIC, the um, the uh, Securities Investor Protection Corporation which is responsible for taking over a financial firm in bankruptcy is now um, corralling all of the assets of uh, Mr. Madoff locating assets and securing those assets and has begun a process where they have mailed out 
to all of the customers that they can identify claim forms, ask those claim forms to be submitted to them, and they have in fact begun to make payments on claims under the SIPC insurance fund to some of the victims of, of Bernard Madoff. As you can imagine, because all of the record keeping appears to have been false, um, it is an enormously complex task to um, uh, dissect and then put back together um, a, a clear picture of all the activity and all of the potential victims. But SIPC has indeed, I believe, this week started to pay out on the very first of those claims, which are limited to, to $500,000 per customer. So um, certainly for many people, nowhere near um, the money they may have lost. Thank, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman.